um, organized and coordinated a European study called Reflex. This study was dealing with um, uh, basic effects caused by um, LVMF, extremely low frequency electromagnetic fields, and radio frequency electromagnetic fields. We did this study with the money of the European Commission and uh, we thought that with this um, um, uh, essay we could show that there is nothing, that there are no basic effects caused by the radiation, basic effects with, which are in some way related to the development of chronic diseases. That was the working hypothesis, but the results were opposite. The results showed that uh, um, ELF EMF as well as RF EMF are able to um, uh, change the structure and the function of genes in human cells. And what was the response? Yeah, um, as always in this area of research, um, results of significance which are not in the interest um, of those who have the money and the power are not well accepted. That's what we know for 100 years now. Uh, in our case, uh, our study, uh, our results was first ignored for two or three years when that was not possible anymore. Um, our results were criticized, heavily criticized, and when that was again not possible anymore. Uh, a scandal was created. It was claimed that um, the data obtained at the medical university in Vienna would have been fabricated. This message went all over the world, started in Germany, went all over the world. And um, of course, the medical university of um, uh, Vienna was in trouble and they set up an ethic committee. But the ethic committee could not provide any proof that the fabrication, the fraud, is, has really happened. The same happened to the ed editors of uh, the journals where these uh, papers had been published. They were also under heavy pressure. Who, uh, which uh, 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 an editor is not interested to, to uh, publish uh, a paper um, which has been fabricated. Um, how do they call it? Uh, anyway, um, they have also asked uh, their reviewers, is it possible that these data are fabricated? And the answer of the reviewers was again, no. That means, in spite of the heavy pressure on the University of Vienna, on the editors of two reputable journals, Mutation Research, for example, the other one, uh, International Archives of Occupational Health, um, they uh, refused to um, uh, take the papers out of their journals. They are still part of the scientific literature, in spite of the uh, pressure. And uh, of course, for, for us, for the uh, authors of these papers, it was an um, experience which they will never forget in their life. I'm so uh, appreciative that you did that good work, and I'm sorry that you had so much trouble. What would um, you recommend, based on what you're seeing uh, in, your, in, the, in your work and in others? Yeah, um, our work has in the mean, but in meantime been confirmed by three other groups. These publications, the three pub publications are partly submitted, partly in preparation, but I have the data, I have them in my hands at the moment. <laughs> anyway, we know that the results which have been obtained at the Medical University in Vienna are correct. Related to the meeting here, um, the results show that um, high-frequency electromagnetic fields are able 
to damage the genes and the function of the genes. And this has, of course, some relationship to what we find in uh, the epidemiological research. Um, our data support these findings. Our data um, um, provide the mechanism which are asked for when I have data coming from the op uh, epidemiology, when there's no explanation how this data could arise, they are not credible. But if there are mechanisms which explain why this happened, why there is an increase in, brain, in the brain tumor rate, nicht? it's a strong um, um, support for the validity of epidemiologic data. Is uh, your work supporting the work of, of uh, La and um, uh, Singh and Gandhi, you know, with the Comet essay and yeah. the DNA, double strand yeah, DNA? Yeah. Um, <coughs> um, Henry Lai's work has been done 14 years ago, the first time. It was, uh, similar things happened to him too. He was accused to, as if his work, uh, work would have been nothing but rubbish. And uh, um, we can say our data support his findings. While our data have been obtained in vitro, in uh, the laboratory, his data have been obtained in living animals and are even more important as compared to others. But both set of data, his and ours, support the epidemiological finding, give them credibility. That is it. And, so and that's the reason why um, his data, our data, have been treated so badly. Mm -hmm. and, and what would your uh, bottom line recommendation to the lay person who is concerned about cell phones? Yeah, my um, opinion is at the moment we cannot be sure whether um, um, the mobile phone radiation causes cancer or other diseases, maybe even more important Alzheimer's disease. There are some indications, no proof. We cannot be sure that this is the case, but it seems to be possible. And the more we know, the more speaks in favor of such an assumption. Therefore, be cautious with this technology. Do what you can do for yourself. That's the message. How about the uh, cordless phone? The yeah, that has been discussed here. There was a very interesting contribution to this uh, meeting here. Nicht? Um, cordless phone and uh, uh, GMS, the second generation of mobile phone technology, seems to be similarly effective in, um, uh, 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 let me say this this way, uh, seems to be as uh, similar strong as a burden for the human beings who are exposed. Um, with regard to the efficacy, efficacy, the work, uh, efficacy, we um, uh, have to assume that this is quite similar. Nicht? On the other hand, going a step forward, going to the brand new third generation of mobile phone radiation, to the UMTS technology, nicht? there seems to be a lower um, uh, impact on uh, the human brain using the mobile phone. But on the other hand, our study is showing that the effect on the genes and the gene function seems to be much stronger, about, in our hands, about 10 times stronger. Chronic yeah. exposure to low levels is... We do not know much about the radiation coming from the base station. This meeting here is dedicated to the mobile phone radiation. And uh, from what I have learned here and what we have contributed ourselves, the advice must be be cautious. Consider the um, um, precautionary principle that is what the governments, what the industry should accept.
And how about for children? Yeah, that is a special problem. Um, badly investigated so far. The radiation with children is uh, much higher um, as compared to adults. That depends on their smaller size, the smaller size of the head, uh, the higher amount of fluidity in the brain. The radiation um, penetrates the brain stronger, about double as high as compared to um, adults. This is one problem. Uh, the other problem is um, um, we uh, have a long latency period before, for example, cancer arise. The same will be true for Alzheimer's too. Hmm? While adult people, let me say 50, 60 year old people, might not survive uh, the development of a chronic disease, cancer or uh, Alzheimer's disease, a young person will certainly um, survive the time, uh, the live uh, as long as uh, this uh, disease needs to develop. The latency period is very important in the development of chronic diseases. In old people it doesn't play a major role. But in young people, it's decisive. In my understanding, more important as compared to the double as high uptake of radiation in children. So your general recommendation for kids using? So yeah, I personally would, uh, I'm, I'm a grandfather, nicht? my uh, grandsons and uh, granddaughters don't use uh, the mobile phone. Nicht? Um, it's easy to be said difficult to be done. Um, it depends on uh, the parents, um, how they see the situation. And in my understanding, it depends also on um, the living conditions. Sometimes um, it's important that uh, a child um, gets assistance from the grown-up, from the parents. And if it's far away, the best uh, system to get help is, of course, uh, the, the phone, the mobile phone. Eh? Um, one has to be uh, cautious. Eh? I would advise no mobile phone at all, but under certain conditions and uh, uh, under um, um, the control by the parents, by growing up, um, we cannot the use, uh, we cannot exclude the use of a mobile phone um, for uh, children per 100%. But we should lower the use as much as possible. Thank you so much. Thank you.